from our reading from the Old Testament, we shall be reading from the 13th chapter of the second book of Chronicles. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 13. Chapter 13 from the second book of Chronicles. Second Chronicles 13. And the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, Abijah became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And Abijah set the battle in order with an army of valiant warriors, four hundred thousand choice men. Jeroboam also drew up in battle formation against him with 800,000 choice men, mighty men of valor. Then Abijah stood on Mount Jemariam, which is in the mountains of Ephraim, and said, Hear me, Jeroboam and all Israel. Should you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the, domination, the dominion over Israel to David forever, to him and his sons, by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his Lord. Then worthless rogues gathered to him and strengthened themselves against Rehoboam the son of Solomon. When Rehoboam was young and inexperienced and could not withstand them. And now you think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord, which is in the hand of the sons of David. And you are a great multitude. With you are the golden calves which Jeroboam made for you as gods. <laughs> Have you not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron and the Levites, and made for yourselves priests like the peoples of other lands, so that whoever comes to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may be a priest of things that are not gods? But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken Him. And the priests who minister to the Lord are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites attend to their duties. And they burn to the Lord every morning and every evening, burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. They also set the showbread in order on the pure gold table, and the lampstands of gold with its lamps to burn every evening. For we keep the command of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. Now look, God himself is with us as our head, and as priests with sounding trumpets to sound the alarm against you. O children of Israel, do not fight against the Lord God of your fathers, for you shall not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to go around behind them, so they were in front of Judah, and the ambush was behind them. And when Judah looked around, to their surprise, the battle line was at the front and the rear. And they cried out to the Lord, and the priests sounded their trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout. And as the men of Judah shouted, it happened that God struck Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. And the children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. Then Abijah and his people struck them with a great slaughter. So 500,000 choice men of Israel fell slain. Thus the children of Israel were subdued at that time. And the children of Judah prevailed because they relied on the Lord God of their fathers. And Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took cities from him, Bethel with its villages, Jeshanah with its villages, and Ephraim with its villages. So Jeroboam did not recover strength again in the days of Abijah, and the Lord struck him, and he died. But Abijah grew mighty, married fourteen wives, and begot twenty-two sons and sixteen daughters. Now the rest of the acts of Abijah, his ways and his sayings, are written in the annals of the prophet Ido. <coughs> It is written, my beloved brethren, and 
the Bible cannot be broken, that all Scripture is divinely inspired and beneficial and profitable for doctrine, for rebuke, for reproach, for restoration, so that the people of God may be perfect and equipped, ready for every good work. So it is good that we pay attention to the prophetic word of God, because through the prophetic word, we shall receive the things that God wants to give us. And why? Because the New Testament cannot be preached with ignorance of the Old Testament. All the New Testament have refer has references to the Old Testament. And also the Old Testament cannot be preached on its own. Unless someone, the man of God, the child of God, doesn't see it through, through the prism of the New Testament. If we read the New Testament on its own, then the most possible thing is that we will be offended and troubled or lose our faith. But when we read the New Testament and we turn to the Old Testament as well, then we see clearly and are taught and are rebuked and God encourages us and leads us to us after we seek we do the will of God after we seek it and find what is good and perfect and honorable before the face of the Lord. Today we'll spend time on this man, Abijah. This is a king of Judah. He is the son of Jeroboam, of Jeroboam. He is uh, a, a grandchild, great grandchild of David. He is one of those to whom God promised great blessing, and indeed He promised them the Word of God and also the place of his dwelling and glory that is his sanctuary in other words there were every believer, believer could approach God and repent and be cleansed but also that the Word of God be reveal himself the Word of God reveal himself to him and also God to lead him and guide him so the God, God in the Old Testament revealed Himself in the Temple of Solomon. And whoever sought, received. Of course, in the New Testament, God reveals Himself in the place of prayer, the secret place of prayer of every one of us in our room. But in the Old Testament, so that you may get to know God, so that God may reveal Himself to you, so that your sins be forgiven, and that you receive guidance and doctrine, you had to go to the Temple of Solomon and only there. Well, today, in the same way, with absolute expansion of the presence, of the boundaries of the presence of God and the New Testament, so, as you, so that you may know God, so that your sins may be forgiven you, so that the Word of God may be revealed for you, but also at the same time, so that you may receive guidance from the Holy Spirit, you can go to one place and only, and that is your place of prayer. That place where in secret the Father reveals Himself, and through Jesus Christ the believer is led into the Holy Spirit, into the depths of heaven, the holy place of heaven where the throne of God resides. But let us return to Abijah, who was a king, who inherited the kingdom from the father of Jerobo, his father Roboam, who had not done what was good before the, go, the, lo, the Lord. And this always happened in the Old Testament and also in the New. When God, man doesn't do the will of God, when man doesn't stand the way that God wants him, then he, his power diminishes and shrinks his dominion in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, his power and, and strength in the Holy Spirit. Ishak had come, the king of uh, Egypt, and he had he had overcome Jerusalem, but the people of Judah prevailed with the help of God. On the contrary, the twelve tribes of uh, the ten tribes of Israel had uh, rebelled had apostatized themselves from the people of God, they have departed. And what happens many times in the New Testament as well, they had created new gods, and indeed two oxen, two cows. 
they had created a new gospel for themselves. And the word of God says, If someone of you, or an angel even from heaven, preaches another gospel to you, let him be accursed. So Jeroboam had created a new word of God for them, with the result that temporarily they prospered, but in natural and human ways. Spiritually, though, they became smaller and smaller with unprecedented um, consequences for the future. Two kings, two people. One king is Jeroboam with power and authority of man, natural power, natural strength, but he's far from God and without the mercy, without the strength of God in his life and in his people, his dominion. And on the other hand, we see a weak king, Abijah, who had inherited a vanquished people, but which people had something, this man had something that made him different in the eyes of God, and he gave him strength in the presence of the Lord. He had his hope in the Lord. But Jeroboam had his hope in his powers, in his successes. And now they uh, find themselves opposing each other. The moment came that they found themselves opposing each other. And furthermore, Jeroboam, with pride, with absolute trust in himself and in his powers, decided that it is the time, since his power increased and grew over the ten tribes of Israel, he had to take dominion over Judah as well. But what characterizes Abijah here and makes him different, is that is what Jeroboam says is that he doesn't take what God says into account. The man who doesn't consider or take whatever God says into account, he walks according to the flesh, and he falls apart and is destroyed in his flesh. Even if he has the name that he is a believer, I'll go further. In truth, and a bit further, I'll say, even if he is a believer, when in our relationship, in our thoughts, and in our decisions, in our ambitions and attempts, we forget our place of prayer, our secret place of prayer and God's opinion for us, then the results will not be good for us, even if there is the assurance in our heart that we will have perfect success. Because in the end of the story, Success and failure, good and bad, blessing or curse, is not brought upon man, by man, or on himself, or on his family, or in his environment. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, to whom there is no shade or change. What matters in every man is his tomorrow to be better than his today. In our personal life, and in our family life, and in our spiritual life, and in our church life, and in all our life, until our very old ages, as much as God will permit us to live. So what matters now is God's favor. There is no luck. Neither is there ability or chance or great ability in man. There is only God's favor or God's departure. And God's favor doesn't depend at all on the assurance that we have in our heart. God's favor doesn't depend at all on the abilities and the uh, strengths that we have and which also we have received from the Lord. God has given or God has permitted us to have these things until we reach the time of trial. And many times, God permits growth so that we may find ourselves in trial. In other words, if Jeroboam, at that period, had an army 
And instead of 800,000, If Jeroboam didn't have 800,000 facing the 400,000 of Judah, if he had 300,000 or 400,000 uh, army, he would never have attacked Judah, and it would never be proved that he's disqualified, and, it, and the glory of God would never be manifested. So the glory of God is revealed not only in the power of man, because God gave us not a spirit of a wicked, a weakness, but a spirit of power and encouragement of a sound mind and loving of a sound mind. But the, but the grace of God is revealed a lot more in the weakness of man and in the power and when the enemy is mighty. So when we see the enemy growing in power and might, we must suspect that since in our small personal power that we have, if we remain steadfast and immovable in this power, hoping in God, then what will follow is that the, gl the glory of God will be revealed through our human weakness. <laughs> the Christian doesn't see with the eyes of this world, but he has God's vision through the Word of God, vision of God through the Word of God, and by the Holy Spirit. The Christian doesn't hear with these ears of this world. But he has trained ears within him, which the Lord has placed within him, and he knows the future. He acknowledges the future. He can speculate the future. And, and I uh, intentionally do not say the future is prophesied to, to him. Because man of God has wisdom, and the beginning of all wisdom is the fear of the Lord. He has wisdom and he can discern what is good and what is bad, what is honorable and vile. And by choosing what is honorable and rejecting what is vile, his hope is safe and secure then, and his hope is that the favor of God will be revealed upon him gloriously in the next days, the next time, the next few the next, the following time. The people look at their abilities and their strengths, they measure them, they, they sum them up, and then they begin. But the man of God looks at his faith in the Word of God. He examines his hope to see if it's in the Lord and in the Lord alone. His life, if it is in sanctification and cleanness, to see whether he is in obedience or not, and then he knows with certainty that the glory of God is going to be revealed a lot greater when his power is small. Here, my dear brethren, I want us to clear something up. A Christian doesn't fear sin, neither sinners, because for sin, for my sin, and our sin, Christ has already paid. The Christian fears God. The Christian takes God into account. The Christian worships God. For the sins that I've made, committed in the past, Christ has paid for them. But also for the f sins that I will commit in the future, Christ again has paid. But what applies is the blood of Jesus Christ... The, the, Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ has power and authority when I, with fear of God, I'm ready at all times to repent, to change my ways, to run or to stop, to go forward or to go backwards according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. A Christian knows that only whoever is led, not sinless because there's no one who is sinless, but only those who are led by the Holy Spirit are children of God, and God is favorable toward them. And Abijah, this weak man, knew it. And not only he knew it, but he also expressed it. And what we believe, God wants us to confess it as well. Because only if you believe in your heart, what? 
all the things referring to God, and you confess with your mouth everything that is of God, then you will be saved. And Abijah did this thing exactly, what God desired for him. Precisely that. He went out to fight with half the army of the enemy, with small power. But the things that he had in his heart and believed, those are the things he expressed. Jeroboam, he said, do not go on, you will not prosper, because your battle is not against us, but it's against the Lord of hosts. And we are coming out to fight against you, because our battle is not against you, but it is with the grace and the help of God. It's the Lord's. It is not our battle. It's the battle of the Lord. So before the, begin, the battle had even begun, it was over. And this is very serious, my dear brethren, when you to have won the war before you even have started it. And how is this? How can this be? This can be because victory is um, fulfilled only in heaven. When you convince God with your obedience, with your prayer, when you find grace in the eyes of God, with your humility, when you stir up the heavenly powers with your hope that the Lord will be with you, then certain things happen that you cannot see, but God works in them. God rises up. The powers of God rise up. The Lord stands from His throne along with His army. And He does things for you that only afterward can you know about them. For that reason I say this, it is necessary in everything that we decide to do in our life and we begin to do it, we must be sure that the victory through Jesus Christ has already come. And therefore we walk with safety and security in the footsteps of Christ. We do not go to fight, in other words, but we go to win. We do not go to be to suffer, but we go to be blessed. We do not go there to be vanquished, but we go in war to triumph. We do not go with hesitation and doubt, but we go with power of faith, and power of the Holy Spirit. Where? To everything. In every situation of our life. Even when a woman goes to give birth, for example. Or when two children, two young people are going to get married. Or when some man is going, is going to get a job, or a woman. Or when we go in, uh, when we start school, when kids start school, or university. Every action in our life, every activity of our life, God gives us the ability in this to begin victorious from the beginning. This is how Jeroboam thought was going, victorious from the beginning because he had double army than Abijah. He went with... Uh, uh, he was optimistic and with pride and with safety. He thought, I will destroy them now. But he made a great mistake and whatever he thought was wrong because he did not take into account what the will of God is. But Abijah, what he thought, what he believed, what he confessed, God executed it and he did it a lot better and with greater power. He went out winning to win and he did win. I repeat, he went out winning 
and to win, and he did win. Now, um, now think of the message that God wants to give you here, brother. That you have the ability to go out always with the assurance of victory, which is guaranteed not by power nor by strength, but by the Spirit of the Lord of hosts. And this applies when your weakness is great. If, furthermore, your weakness is perfect, then the power of God will be revealed complete, glorious, and the end of your matter, and the end of your story. We have evil times ahead of us, difficult times ahead of us. I was reading yesterday, I do not know if it's right or not, there are some predictions that the financial people have made for the United States and generally for the world. And they spoke about a short period of time, between two months and twelve months. They said the crisis will become even worse, the financial crisis, and they, they made a parallel. They made Barack Obama look like Gorbachev, who had a lot of good words, but a bad result. I do not know if this will happen. I do not n believe that it will happen. But one thing I do know and believe, that the Lord is coming, that the times are evil, and that every one of us today is encouraged by the Lord of hosts to go out victoriously and to win. Not with optimism and opinions that are human and earthly and dependent on abilities and strengths of men, but only with our hope in the Lord, the fear of God, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and obedient to the Word of God. Without us ever fearing our mistakes, without us fearing and becoming disappointed because of our failures and sins. In other words, without us fearing and becoming disappointed for our weaknesses. Because in our weakness, the Lord of hosts will, find, will reveal Himself mighty. Amen.